All right, you guys are, you guys all have nothing to say until it's time to start class. <laughs> then I have to butt in. Yeah, they do. Good to see all of you tonight. We'll, we're starting a, a sort of a six week new series tonight that really, uh, I, I, I'll explain in a minute, but it's, it's connected to what we, what we have been doing. And it, it is something, you know, last week I asked if you guys have things that you want for us or need for us to spend a little more time on or, or to have a class on, please let me know. And I got a, I got a note the next day from, from one of our class members, and we're going to go off of that and, and uh, focus on one thing brought up in the Sermon on the Mount and uh, uh, kind of deal with that in other New Testament passages for a few weeks here. So we'll get to that in just a second. Um, it's good to see everybody. I have a few announcements that I uh, might uh, share with you before we get started. Fred, do you mind to lead the prayer tonight after this? Uh, one, uh, Linda Barnett called us this afternoon to let us know that Brother Feeney uh, needs to be in our prayers, or she asked that he be. Uh, he was taken to uh, Mercy last night. He's in ICU, and uh, he has some type of an infection and are having to try to regulate uh, a blood pressure problem. Brother Feeney is, uh, uh, has been a resident down at the Veterans uh, Home in, in Mount Vernon, and, and uh, he's very... Very thin right now, but uh, we ask everybody to keep them in our prayers. Uh, our ladies' Bible class tomorrow, you guys still, it's going to be a nice day tomorrow, I think. So it gets started back tomorrow after a little bit of a break. Uh, and it's at 10.30 in the morning. Linda Courier is teaching tomorrow. Uh, the quilters meet at 9. Card makers at 9.30. Thank you guys for all of your good uh, work. Uh, there's still a couple of spots available on the on the feeding the homeless activity, which is on the 21st, uh, and the sign-up sheet is out on the information desk. And what it says is that there can be a need for servers or a casserole or some other uh, item there. And if you'll check that, if if that's uh, something you might be interested in, it'd be good. Servers, okay. And if you if you wonder what that is, what that involves, or what it's like, talk to Barney about it. He's been there always to help with that, so that'd be good. Uh, also, there are copies of the 2024 budget, which our elders and deacons have worked on. It details the 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 anticipated uh, expenses and so forth, and that's available for everybody out on the on the. Uh, uh, information desk. So check that also. Uh, this Sunday, January the 14th, following the morning service, is the kickoff lunch for the LP uh, uh, activities uh, for this between now and uh, their, I think about Easter time. Um, it, in, it involves grades 3 through 12. It involves a lot of us who are helping the maybe mentor a, a particular activity. Um, there, there's more information of, available about that. Um, and if you need information, contract, contact Travis or Pam, either one about that. But are there any other announcements or any other prayer requests or things like that that anybody has? That's why we have your baby yet. Still waiting. Still waiting. And it's a and and when it and when and when he when the baby arrives, you won't have to wonder for information. It'll be it, it'll, it'll be available. Yeah. Okay, very good. That is fellowship, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody else with a? A prayer request or announcement or anything? 
Okay, Susie. For my son, maybe my daughter-in-law. Your son and daughter-in-law. Special. Okay. 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 Please remember her son and daughter and daughter-in-law. Then they live here, Susie, or do they live in Springfield here? Or no, okay. 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 Yes, Larry. Tina and Alan are coming back from Virginia this week. Yeah, I hope they have safe trip. Oh, I saw a cute picture of that too. Yeah. Thanks for that. I hope I hope they uh, can work their way in between weather uh, fronts and all that. It's uh, an adventure right now, I'd say. Anybody else? All right, brother Fred, if you'll if you'll lead us, please. Most holy Father, we humbly come in our presence, Lord, thanking you that you've given us this day. That you've given us so many wonderful blessings. Father, we thank you that we have this opportunity to be here tonight, that we can study more of your word, that we can prepare ourselves for this life and for the life to come. Father, we ask you at this time to bless those who spend their time preparing themselves to teach the classes that you so time involved. And Father, we are thankful that so many in this congregation have spent hours and hours and weeks and half their lives preparing for this. We ask you, Lord, to uh, Yellow, and I wonder how many of us uh, would share that that kind of um, awareness of the 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 feeling that we wonder is Jesus challenging us where he says, "Do not be anxious." Am I falling short of that? Am I supposed to be able just to turn that feeling off and and not have trouble with it anymore? Or, or what? And uh, so I, I, I told the, our, our folks that we'd go back and, and do that because I think it is, uh, first, the passage is subject to uh, uh, maybe uh, to some amount of misunderstanding. And second, uh, the passage is, a, is a, probably the most practical challenge for everybody of anything in this whole in, in this whole uh, reading, so I want to let's let's go back for a minute just and reread the paragraph, and and then uh, try to try to think our way through it uh, for a few minutes uh, tonight. I, I I we'll do part of this tonight, and then the next few weeks we'll take the other passages in the New Testament where this problem is dealt with. Matthew six. 25. If you guys don't mind, I'll just read this one for us. Uh, and this is out of the ESV this time. Therefore, what does it mean when it starts with therefore? Continuing on. All right, it's based on what has gone before this. So, this, we're reading it like one subject, but it really isn't in the Sermon on the Mount. This grows out of Lay up treasure in heaven. Don't try to serve two masters, that type of thing. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Uh, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of his life? And why are you anxious about clothing? 
Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, which is today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Now, when you, when you read that, why, why would we want to go back to it and read it and think about it again. Why do you think? Seems easy to read, but it's hard. Yes. To comprehend. Yes. And that's 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 a huge thing, I think. The wonderful illustrations are the lilies and the birds, both of which I enjoy. <laughs> but uh, I'm a person. And uh, persons can can uh, can deal with uh, matters of worry, which is what the Lord is dealing with here. I think. Any other reasons why you why you know that we would need to reread this or read, need to rethink about it? Is there anybody present who's disappointed that we reread this passage again, or doesn't it always seem relevant? I think that's what I think of. It's always relevant to all of us. Notice how many times it, it mentions do not be anxious. The phrase translated uh, in some versions don't, do not worry or even uh, don't keep on worrying. David? We feed the birds. We've got a feeder out and I scatter extra feed on the ground and they come in by the hundreds and we enjoy watching. I have to sit and this is God's yeah, there's a limit. I'm grinning because there's, there's a limit to uh, any illustration, I suppose. But <laughs> Kay feeds the birds all the time and has for years. And we, we enjoy it. There's a feeder right by the window there. So I'm, I think it was Saturday morning. I'm standing there by the window with my cup of coffee and the birds are there in the feeder. And this big old hawk swoops, <laughs> swoops right in. And two of them fly off the window and he grabs one and off he goes. So, so much for the feeding the birds, I guess. Even, 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 and that's why I fed the hawk, didn't it? She fed more than one kind of bird. In this passage, I notice verse 25, 27, 28, 28, 31, and 34. All, it all repeats that idea of, of not being anxious or why are you anxious and that kind of thing. When we read through this, I brought with me my notes from that particular class, and we're not we won't go. We're not going to reteach this. Don't worry. But I I, I, I suggest that you can use that passage uh, f to to uh, deal with anxious thoughts by means of our self talk, the things we say to ourselves. And here are the here are the things that we suggested from that text. I have a life. Verse twenty five. I have a value more than birds or flowers, verse 26 and 28 through 30. I have a limit. There are some things that I can't add to my life, including a, an inch taller or, a, or a, 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 a span or a length of time to the, the, the length of my life. I have a faith uh, that is a, a, it's a, Sometimes is a little faith, but I have a faith that the, my Father knows what I need. I have a purpose. It's the kingdom of God and His righteousness and seeking it. And I have a day. Verse 34. I'm sure you remembered all that, didn't you? Those, that's how we dealt with it the last time. I want to, uh, to go back and, 
and and uh, to try to try to engage your imagination with me for a second. One of the big issues here, I think, is what are we talking about? When I mention anxiety, describe to me the range of feelings that can be included in that word. What all kinds of things going on in my mind or my life or my heart can, can that cover? I think it's more than one. Fear. All right, it can be fear, right? Of what's going to happen or what might happen to me, David. When we let that fear take over our lives and control it. Yeah. That, let God control it. That becomes, the, that becomes the part of the issue we'll talk about. But fear is one part of it. Can you think of any other of the emotions covered by the word anxiety? We mentioned one is worry implies dread, I think. Pressure, stress, bad feeling. Um, the word, uh, the the idea of uh, anxiety sometimes implies also a medical condition. Anxiety can be can be the effect of one medicine versus another. It can be. Uh, sometimes an offshoot of something going on that needs care, like uh, certain kinds of depression or that type of thing. Or it can be a feeling, it can be, on the other hand, a feeling of insecurity, uh, of, of, uh, of, uh, of, of maybe things not being well relationally in our, in our lives. Uh, in, in, when I looked up the, the word that's used here and in other passages, I'm going to give you the noun and the verb, not the, not the Greek word, but the meaning, okay? Of the, and I think it's as important. The word, the noun uh, that's translated anxious uh, in passages like this means to be drawn in different directions. You see any of the old movies where the bad guy gets the good guy and stretches the good guy out on a rack and ties his one arm over here and the other arm over here. And if you don't turn over to me, if you don't sign the deed to your ranch, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to pull you. you you've seen it drawn in different directions. Uh, physically, you, you can imagine what that, that feeling would be. What about in your heart? or in your, in your mind, that, that idea. And the verb of this means to be, uh, to be anxious about or to have a distracting care. Distracting. Um, what happens when you're driving and, and you have to deal with a distracted driver? That's when bad stuff happens, isn't it? When... And, and, and when you are, uh, when you're raising your kids, you take them with you to the grocery store, to Walmart, or to the Empire Fair, or wherever it is, and you turn your head for one minute, and you look around, and they're gone. And you, that happened to you? Okay, Adam, this is a sign of things to come here. You be aware. So the, the, the distracted feeling uh we can we can kind of imagine that. So let's let's take take that to this text and think about Jesus' use of this word here. Uh, if if I were to draw a, a continuum of what I think goes on in my mind or in, in human minds generally, I showed you this before. I think that there the two possibilities are apathy, the two extremes are apathy and arrogance. And I might, I might suggest then that over here in the middle of this somewhere is the, the capability or the possibility for anxiety. Where would you think anxiety of the kind that Jesus is talking about would be placed on this? Let me show you in the Sermon on the Mount over here, if we start with, um, uh, 
if we start with the idea that we are to be people who are hunger, we, we hunger and thirst for righteousness, that would be, wouldn't it, the opposite of this. If we start over here, if we, if we arrive over here and come to the end of the Sermon on the Mount and, and to say, why are you calling me Lord, Lord, and not doing the things that I say? That would be the feeling of the opposite. Of, 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 when Jesus talks about the wise man building on the rock by hearing and doing, that would be the maybe the opposite of both of these. Anxiety can be somewhere on this continuum and maybe not what Jesus is talking about exactly. That, if, that, if that makes sense. Let me show you what I'm, what I'm trying to get at here. If you, if you think about um, the passages where anxiety is discussed, for example, let me give you two examples of this. One of them is in Philippians 4. And um, it's, it's, verse, it's maybe verse 4 or... Uh, five or six right along in there. Look over. This is a famous text and you'll all recognize it immediately. But uh, after it tells us to rejoice there, uh, always and the Lord is at hand, verse six beginning. What does he say there? Be anxious for nothing. Yeah, be anxious for nothing. Uh, on the other hand, I mean, in, in everything that you're... Requests be made known to God. Your prayers be made known to God. On the other hand, the same writer, the Apostle Paul, look over at 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 28 for a second. Same, the same writer. 2 Corinthians is the most personal of all of Paul's letters in terms of ministry, what it feels like. And... Um, in this passage, starting in verse 21, Paul recounts all the things that he's been through in his service to the Lord and all the hardships he's endured and he's suffered. And there, there, are, uh, there are labors, imprisonments, beatings, um, uh, lashes, rods, stonings, shipwrecks, Drifting at sea, dangers uh, from rivers, robbers, his own people, Gentiles, the city and the wilderness at sea, from false brothers, hardship through many sleepless nights, hunger, thirst without food and cold and exposure. That sounds glamorous, doesn't it? But now look at his conclusion to this, verse 20, verse 28 especially. What does he say? Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. How the, I'm, I'm interested in that word, deep concern. Look at the ways in which it's translated. It's the same word that Jesus uses in, the, in our passage in Matthew and be not anxious. And the same word he used in Philippians 4 and 6 where he said, in nothing be anxious. Do any of you have another translation of verse 28? All right. My, besides and apart from other things, there is the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. Same word. Now, what's the difference and how can the same fellow who's in the Lord's service and who, who um, would be trying to practice the Sermon on the Mount himself, how can he say both things and what does that tell us about what Jesus meant? A clear question to you? How can the same fellow say both of these things and nothing be anxious? And besides all this, there's my, the pressure that's on me daily, the, my anxiety for all the churches. 
daily living. I mean, it's there's going to be strife no matter what. All right, but but does this here not apply to daily living? This this said, in, in nothing be anxious, but in everything let your requests your your prayer, your requests, and your supplications be made known to God. Yeah, it's they. Easy to say and hard to take care of sometimes. All right, these things are hard to take care of. That's true. Anybody else though? Do you notice any? Do you notice any difference in the emphasis in those two passages? What's this one talking about? Your personal relationships with people and your inward life and your your own your own heart. This one is talking about what? Your concern for others, your concern for the well being of the Lord's church, your your concern for the spiritual health of your brothers and sisters in Christ. To, to put it in the in the terms of the Sermon on the Mount, uh, where 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 what I've read here follows a, a, a few verses earlier the prayer that he taught uh, about uh, uh, praying for the Lord's kingdom, praying for the Lord's will to be done, praying to be kept from the evil one, uh, deliver us from evil, deliver us from evil, it said. The us, would that be me and my family? Would it be me and my brothers and sisters in Christ? Would it include the church? It include the church. So it is not, it is not, I think sometimes the idea that that not there should there, there would be the possibility of, of following a Christ who went to the cross without ever having any feeling of stress or pressure or anxiety at all is 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 a misunderstanding of what the Lord is talking about. On the other hand, to be able to live so that we are not drawn away, that we are not distracted, that we're not, we're not drawn in, in, in the other direction. We're, that it is possible for us to be be uh, characterized by this idea where where we are 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 not distracted from our true purpose or what's really important or what comes first uh, and where this is in our own inner being our own walk with the lord in our own inner life that that that's possible. But to have anxiety for the welfare of the Lord's cause or for other people or for what might happen in our lives, that might be that might be the direction that the Lord is headed uh, for us. It might be something that we are aware of. Now, both of these, if I think that I can only live uh, in, in the whole purpose of my living is for there to be never a stressful moment in my life, then I'm thinking that apathy can, is acceptable. But if I'm thinking over here that the well-being of the Lord's church and everybody and everything else depends on me, then that heads over in the direction of arrogance. It can't all depend on me or, and, 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 or it can't all depend on you either if you think about Dave. Made strong in weakness. Yeah. But then, and Jesus turned around in, in 12 and 9, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And it is like that's the answer to what verse 20 says here, that verse 28 says. It leads on to that. My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness, which is a theme of 2 Corinthians if you get to study in it in that way. Any comment from any of you down to here? Any observation about this? Go ahead, Ruth. Oh, I just want to say, sometimes what happens to me is I wake up in the middle of the night and I get to worrying about something. 
and I cannot get it off my mind. The I difference do that for two, three hours. Oh my! The difference between you and me is you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> you think about what that means now. What I'm saying. Uh, that that I understand. That's that is. Uh, it, it's hard for people who to care deeply, deeply, and to, and to and to be able to turn that off or or to. We're going to read one of the passages later on about casting our cares on the Lord. I want to, I want to, and we'll we'll deal with that more. But for a minute, let me let me ask you to read uh, for me some passages where the danger of this, what the Lord is talking about, uh, comes up. One of them is in the parable of the sower, Matthew 13, 22. Barney, would you find that one for us? Another one is in... Uh, well, with Martha, for example, and Luke uh, 10 and verse 41, this comes up. Also the same idea or the same uh, word, the same term. We've read about Paul and... In 2 Corinthians uh, 8, I could show you some examples of the opposite of this for people who do not care at all. Uh, and and uh, you could see the ugliness of that condition. John 10, verse 13, and John 12 and verse 6. One of you find these. And Acts 18, verse 17. Let's look first at what can happen if we are drawn in different directions. Um, this from the parable of the sower, uh, Mark four nineteen. Does somebody, Barney, you have that one? I think I said Mark. Did I not say? Did I? Well, I knew what I meant. Matthew thirteen is the is the Matthew's account of this of the same parable, Mark 4 has three things in this verse that this is the uh, the rocky ground. You remember what happens with the seed that falls on the rocky ground? It comes up, but... Yeah, and, and it's not rocky ground. It's the, the thorns, isn't it, that I'm talking What happens when it's sown among the thorns? The weeds? I chokes out, yeah. My my experience in gardening has been much like it. Mark four nineteen, Barney. And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things entering in, entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Okay, now in that verse. The phrase there that's talk, that is translated the cares of this world is the same word that's translated anxiety or don't be anxious in Matthew 6. It can, if, it, if it is something which along with the, rich, or the pleasure of the world, the desire for other things, chokes out the word, then it's the wrong kind of anxiety. What Paul is talking about here, did it make him more attuned to the Lord's Word or less? It was his concern for staying with the Lord's Word that made him anxious for the churches. Over here, what he's saying is don't let the desire for riches or pleasures or other things Smother out your sense of well-being in your own in your own heart in your in your relationships with your loved ones with, with people and so on. All right, look at another example of this uh, in Luke ten. I've told you before. I think Martha gets an unfair uh, disregard from 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 people sometimes. But in this in in this case, you you remember the story of Martha hosting. The dinner for Jesus in her house, and uh, she's the one having to do all the work. In this case, what was it that happened? Uh, verse forty-one. You go ahead and somebody read it for us. Luke ten forty-one. Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, 
Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. All right, she was anxious, and how did it manifest itself in that, in that, in that situation? What was happening with Martha that caused Jesus to say that? Rushing around there taking care All right. of she, she was distracted. She's trying to go in two directions. She's trying to pay attention to Jesus and get everything ready and care and serve everybody and so forth all at the same time. And she gets frustrated because she's she, getting any help. That's right. And 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 in, can you understand her in, in that way? I don't think Jesus was getting on to her. I think He's trying to help her. Not everything depends on you, uh, but but that's the when that becomes the permanent condition in a person's heart or life, then it chokes out the word and it chokes out relationships with uh, with uh, loved ones. And and then the third passage. What was it that we asked somebody? Oh, the other cases are the opposite of this. When you run across people who have, you could say they have no anxiety, but man, it makes awful, awful uh, situations of when they don't care. If, you, if, if we think that not being anxious is not caring at all, or caring only about ourselves, then we've made a mistake. So look at John 10, 13. The story of the Good Shepherd. Somebody have it? The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. All right. What what is it's not exactly the same word as in Matthew six, but he doesn't care. So he's he's not the shepherd. He's a hard hand. The wolf comes. He doesn't care about the well being of the flock. So what does he do? Must be nice, man. Just. Drop it and run and leave them to it. Look at look at uh, chapter over John twelve and a couple of chapters. John twelve and verse six. And this is when um, Mary anoints Jesus with the precious ointment. And uh, who was it that started murmuring over that? This waste. All right, it's Judas. And this is John's comment. John 12 and verse 6. What does it say? This he said, not that he cared what he wore, but because he was a thief. Had the money box and used to take one of his All right, does that sound noble to you? Does, does not caring <laughs> seem, I mean, you, that, you could not care about the poor not care about anything. You care about the money in the money bag, but you're anxious because somebody did a love indeed. <laughs> you don't care about this, but you. the opposite is not just peace. It is being all stirred up about other things. And then look at the third case. This is over in, uh, in, in uh, Acts 18, verse 17. And this is when... Uh, Accusation is brought against uh, those who've who've worked with Paul in the gospel, and uh, and uh, at, at Corinth, and uh, uh, they they they, uh, they have Paul before Gallio, the proconsul proconsul of Achaia. And they're all attacking Paul and bringing charges to him before the tribunal. And uh, they, uh, the guy dismisses them, telling them that uh, he regards this as just a matter of questions among the Jews about names and your law and you should see to it yourself. I refuse to be a judge of these things. He drives them from the tribunal or the judgment seat. And uh, look at verse 17. What does it say? And then all the Greeks took Sophinius, the ruler of the synagogue, beat him before the judgment seat. But Gallio took no notice of these things. All right, and took no notice of is he did not care. It's this, this idea of, of not caring again. 
and 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 you look at the the turmoil that's going on, what's happening to other people, but this guy doesn't care at all. That's not what Jesus is talking about, is it? That's not what he's advising us for us here, is it? He isn't saying, like the hired hand, run for your life. It doesn't involve you. And he isn't saying, um, watch out for yourself and, and uh, watch out for the money bags for what you could get out of it. And he isn't saying, don't let it bother you that injustice is going on around you. And he isn't saying that. He is saying, though, that it's, it, it's possible to go about life so that we are, we're not drawn uh, in different directions and we're not distracted and our inner life is not uh, in, always in a, in a wreck over it. So that brings us back to the Sermon on the Mount for a minute. Let's, let's suggest two or three things from it that might point us in the right direction. One of these things we, we talked about when we read this paragraph originally, one of the things I want to emphasize maybe a little bit more. One thing in this, in this passage in the Sermon on the Mount is settle the question of who your Father is. How would I get that idea from that paragraph that I read from Jesus in Matthew 6. This, this, this takes continual reinforcement, but that this is one of the main things about self-talk. I looked it up. Okay, Ruth, go ahead. All right, our value to the Father. What Jesus said, who, who is it that feeds the birds? I know Kay and David and Ginger, but, but in this passage... Your heavenly Father. Your heavenly Father. All right. Who dresses up the lilies? Who clothes the grass? Uh, your heavenly Father does. Who knows what you what what's going on? I look it up to the today again. Counted in the Sermon on the Mount, God is referred to as our Father, our heavenly Father of of, of Jesus' disciples sixteen times. And that's interesting to me. In these three three chapters, sixteen times he reminds us to to regard God as our heavenly Father. What's your favorite saying from the Sermon on the Mount? Remember, we got this paragraph here. We got the model prayer. Uh, we got other other. What's your favorite f saying about the fatherhood of God in the Sermon on the Mount? Range, I should have given you a week to work on this. Range it out a bit in your mind. But go back to the Beatitudes. Right? Where your treasure is, that'll be your heart. That's what you've been talking about. I was thinking back to the uh, Beatitudes. Matthew 5 and verse uh, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called... What? Children of God. I was thinking about the, the end of Matthew 5. Uh, Sandy came in today and asked me about this. Uh, you therefore be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, it's not morally, that's morally perfect is not what we're talking about, but, but, but mature, or complete, or come to your, your uh, true end in, in being a child of God. Uh, you, you, your Father makes His Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends His reign on the just and the unjust. What does that mean in our lives? And think of the simplicity of this and the, the, the calmness of it. It means that we, we try to do good uh, to... to uh, to people, whether they love us and do good to us or not, that's the that's the difference, the essential difference here. How do I settle the question of who my Father is in view of uh, the Gospel of Christ? Who could be a 
a child of God. Who's invited? Who does the Lord want to be God's children? All of us. The gospel invites all of us to be that. How do I actually answer that call? Now, when I've heard the gospel, I, I first off, do I believe it or not? Do I accept it as truth or not? Then does it do I does it bring about any repentance in my in my life? Then am I willing to say so with my mouth? And then am I willing to let God unite me with Christ in baptism? And then if I believe He's raised me up to newness of life or made me His child, then a part of Christian living is to remind myself of that every day. What's the one thing that the Lord wants to happen every day in my life that reminds me that God is my Father? The one thing. There's, there's others, but one thing for sure. The model prayer, remember? How does it start? How did the Lord advise us to start? Our Father in Heaven. And our means my father, and I'm not alone in it. I have brothers and sisters in the Lord. That's that's a starting place here. Now, the second thing that happens in this context is that it is it is a it is set in a context which is focused on. Um, maybe clarifying what what our our way of life is about, clarifying what we are living for as disciples of Jesus, and, and this means again some amount of of self talk to me. But I want to go back with you and and just notice again. Uh, from the Sermon on the Mount, the way this, the, the therefore, uh, notice, notice carefully what I'm getting at. In verse 25, the start of that paragraph, what's the first word? Therefore. And in verse 34, at the conclusion of this paragraph, what does it start with? Therefore. So therefore, this paragraph about not being anxious assumes something that goes before it and something that comes after it. And it happens that the things that go before it and come after it are the things that if not heeded cause anxiety. Okay, now I'll show, what, I'll show you what I mean here, or try to show you what I mean. All right, in, in, in Matthew 5, from verses 17 on, there are five, six, there are six examples of, 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 of you have heard, but I say, where the Lord makes the demands of the law more stringent because He makes them inward. That passage, that kind of activity can have one of two effects. It can either call us to be honest in our hearts before God, or it can cause us to wonder whether we have done enough. How much anxiety comes from that? Have I done enough? Have I done enough? Have I been good enough? Have you ever wondered that? Bill used to say that. I, I heard him, yeah. 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 I, and I've had that. I had to talk with him too about that before. Uh, the second part of this now, the the danger in, in in chapter six and verses one and following is whether I'm doing things just to be seen of men. What what would lead me or have people say? What would lead me to be interested or, or to be consumed with wanting to do things to be seen by people? What do people think of me? What do people? How much anxiety comes from that? Now, of course, we we care about each other, but if I'm dominated by what you're going to think, 
That can keep me from doing a lot of what I should do, right? Then the next part of it is, where are my treasures? And if that's not clarified, then I can walk around and say, what if I lose everything? What if the economy crashes? What if, uh, what if uh, uh, there's a disaster? What if there's a war? What, you know, all that kind of stuff can start bouncing around in, in, our, in our minds. And, and then uh, the, the next part of this in chapter 7, the issue of judging. What about if other people are not doing right? You see, you see the, the things that come here. If I don't, what if I haven't done enough? Um, uh, what are people going to think of me? What if I lose everything? What if everybody else is doing bad things? Uh, all that, that that's the stuff that produces anxiety. The positive action of the Sermon on the Mount provides a context where those things starve for air. They 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 they, they can't they can't uh, they can't uh, thrive. Good things can thrive with that. And then the the other thing. I'm going to have to come back to this and some of the other passage. But the other thing now is, and this is not, this is not uh, glamorous or glorious, but it's what, it's what Jesus is saying. Uh, is you clarify what you're living for and then tend to your way of life. What is your normal practice? Um, Paul, uh, Paul Faulkner used to teach at ACU for a long time. He was an elder in the church. He wrote a book, a little book, Making Things Right When Things Go Wrong. And, and the, in it, he, he said, uh, one of the things he said is, some, sometimes you have to act your, your way, act your way to a better way of feeling instead of feeling your way to a better way of acting. Now I, got, I get lost in that sometimes, but you see what he means? What comes first, really, on, on the days that we all have? Do you only have... Do you, you have to feel before you act, or do you act and your feelings come along with that? Some, some you see sometimes what happens in, in sports you you train you practice and so forth so you create muscle memory and then you do what comes normally or what comes naturally for it. but in life you you exercise you exercise the discipline of doing what you know you should and you find out your feelings come along your emotions eventually come along in the wake of that and when they don't, it's time to, to, to talk to somebody, talk to a friend, involve, a, involve an elder in, in the church, or, or maybe if, if it persists, don't be afraid to get, uh, see a counselor or uh, talk to your doctor and, 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 and uh, that type of thing. Uh, because if it starts to smother your your well-being and your heart or distract you from your normal from your chosen way of life so you're not able to be who you want to be then that's that's when that's when uh, the help is 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 not a shameful thing it's a it's a great thing any comment from some, anybody for go roof what i have to do is i finally have to get my focus and, and on god on the lord and I have to say, Lord, I just need to give this to you right now. I just need you to take this from me and help me with it. And Thank you, you know, for... Mostly, yeah. most of the time when I do that, it helps. It helps. And thank you for sharing that with us. But I think that's the, the practice of what we're talking about here. I think that's, uh, that's right. Uh, anybody else with any comment about this before we go? I want to I want to take you take us over the next five weeks to some of the passages in the New Testament 
other contexts which talk about this. We're going to examine what's the situation, what's its teaching, what's its application. And then on the last one of these, I'm going to share with you is, is something that I found from Brother Bill Flatt, who taught for years at Harding uh, Graduate School and, uh, and wrote about counseling issues, some of, the, some of the peace of mind or emotional things as well. And I think it'll be helpful for us in, in that way. Let's have a prayer before we go. Um, Bill got us there. I'm going to lead us in the prayer anyway. If you got them out with us. Father, we thank You for the day. Thank You so much for the, Your daily care of the birds and the flowers and us. And then thank You so much for what Jesus taught Help us, Father, to apply it to in our in our walk each day, to have a sense of uh, well-being and a sense of peace and a, a sense of, uh, uh, of ability to cope in our in our lives each day. Thank you for what that can do to our views of of, of life and our, our relationships with people and in our ability to keep on serving. Father, thank You for my brothers and sisters who are here bless all of our lives through the rest of this week and help us to honor You and to enjoy You. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Gary, I've been I've been eating chocolate chip cookies this week. Uh, <laughs> well, I thought you were going to say that if we were busy with all of our worries, lest the hawk might swoop down and get us. <laughs> I wish you'd have pointed that out. That's what I was what I was suggesting. <laughs> Thank you. I wrote it on my calendar. I don't know why, but I did. Can't be like I on Esther. I, I do have a little bit. A little bit? Yeah. Can I borrow something? Yeah, let me. Can I, I give it to you Sunday? Sunday? Sunday's yeah. fine. Yes, I'll look it up. I have to do some teaching on it. What a great and book. I'm, what a great I'm book. I'm looking at different things, and I don't want to ask people. <laughs> you know, the wonderful thing about that.